Welcome to the Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. On this episode, we'll be discussing the return of MoviePass, a.k.a. The Walking Dead of mobile apps. Streaming officially beats cable. Regal cinemas are in trouble. We've got a few other fun topics. And then, of course, Game of Thrones returns with House of the Dragon. Let's get on with the show. My name is Aaron Peterson. Joining me today are my fellow hoes, Troy Heinrichs. Hey, what's up, buddy? Not much. And joining us because uh, John Davenport couldn't make it sick. Manasink in Texas flooded. No power. So joining us because, of course, Game of Thrones. you got to return for that. Brian Williams, previous host. <laughs> hey, good to be back, guys. Even if I am the 27th selection <laughs> in the... Uh... <laughs> A few people had to, had to get before we got to you, but yeah, we got to you. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm glad to be here. If people don't remember, if you're not like a long time listener, maybe you're just, well, actually with Brian, it's probably what, five years now you've been gone? Six yeah, years? Somewhere five years? Right. Yeah, probably about five. Yeah. But he used to every year have a, a Game of Thrones episode on the podcast and actually would come back even after he left just to do that. So you're a fan. Yeah, those, those were fun. Those yeah. were fun. Because he's the only one on the show that's ever been able to pronounce the names correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is like the blonde haired one. You know that one? <laughs> Little finger. It's a small Damn guy. It, they're all blonde now. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah. And then all the blonde ones turned brown headed. So then it was, you know. Oh, man. It got uh, messed up. Yep. It got messed up. There's a lot of wigs in this show. There's a lot. Uh, we're going to save House of the Dragon until the very end just so we can talk about it as freely as we want. So don't worry. You won't be spoiled if you haven't watched the, the new Game of Thrones show. I do want to mention that Knives Out sequel glass onion which is going to be on netflix it debuts on december 23rd so yes i finally get my knives out sequel so does that mean that they did it with the stepsister in the bedroom with the glass onion is that how that works wow you reach for that huh <laughs> <laughs> you were stretching kinda, for that clue reference kinda, woo, kind of <laughs> went around the block to get there didn't you pull the hammy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i i've just the Glass Onion seems like such a weird It's a weird title. title. Yeah, it's weird. You know what? I didn't even address it. Uh, if you're tuning in expecting the 500th episode, that didn't work out because, again, uh, we have a sick host and we have Amanda. John's is, fault. Yeah. John's fault. Doesn't feel good. And Amanda's Gosh. literally underwater. So for once, she has a viable excuse for not being here. You know, we didn't want to have it without everybody. <laughs> Does Amanda live anywhere where I'm flying tomorrow morning? Because that's really my biggest concern. Right where are you now. flying? Where You're going to the podcast movement, right? Going to the Dallas area. Yeah. Is it in Dallas? It's in Dallas. Yeah. That's oh, where you might want to bring an umbrella. <laughs> Considering that I have to walk six blocks from the place where I bought to the hotel. I think that might be. A good Do you idea. have Google? Because you might want to bring some galoshes. Some rubbers. Galoshes. <laughs> it's a little damp, man. They're having like a flood. It's a flood. Do those. Do those galoshes need to be onion shaped? Just curious. You're trying too hard. Stop. <laughs> Just bring it back. Just <laughs> breathe. You know, speaking of things that get my anxiety up, um, let's talk about Movie Pass because it's making another go of it. And I want to <laughs> kind of explain how this is going to work. They're going to reopen this come Labor Day in the States. They're going to begin opening with a wait list on August 25th. So when you're listening to this, you might have already missed the, the window. It depends on how late you listen to the show. But the wait list will be open for five days on August 25th. And you will be able to sign up on a first-come, first-served basis. And then the first batch of successful applicants will be notified on Labor Day when they will be offered three subscription price tiers. The prices will range from $10, $20, or $30 a month. Each subscription option will give the user credits to cash in each month to see movies. There will not be an unlimited viewing option during the service's beta version, as uh, Business Insider reported, nor do we currently have information on how many credits it takes for a movie specifically. Those de details should be out by the time you hear this, though, but it's it's great that they have this whole thing mapped out. Sounds like a typical movie pass plan. And MoviePass's co-founder, Stacy Spikes, said, and I quote, we're going to make mistakes. We're not going to get it right out of the box. <laughs> it's going to be trial and error. This sounds like the shit that happened before. Don't do it. <laughs> what say you all? Do you have PTSD like I do? I didn't join up the first time around. I don't know. For whatever reason, I just didn't. It, it, sounded, it sounded kind of sketchy or not safe. Not from like a 
privacy type of thing, but just it didn't feel like it was, I should say, probably say stable, like it was going to be around for a while. And Mm -hmm. one of the rare times that I was right. So the fact that they're coming back and saying, yeah, we're probably still, we still don't have it right. There's going to be mistakes that I'm not rushing out to, to join up on it. I think it's a right idea because one of the things that I've been a big complainer about with the A-list package is that I can't see three movies in a weekend. I know the idea is not to use all three of them every single week and burn all 12. But if I have three options every week and I want to take me, the wife and one of my kids or even two of my kids, you know, I don't have a family package yet where I just wanted to go see bullet train with my family. I could use three a list spots and then buy the fourth ticket. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what someone's looking for is how do I get that best maximized value for an entire family of, Two and a half to four, and two, this two might and a be half. The, are you are you taking like the torso of somebody? That's like the census national average. They say you know <laughs> okay. like two like every family's two and a half is the average. Um, but so I think that a Only credit if you system have a like this a child <laughs> exactly. But a credit system like this could go a long way to making that kind of concept happen. The question is, is that it's not sponsored by Cinemark. It's not sponsored by AMC. It's sponsored by a third party. And that means AMC and Cinemark have to get on board with this, which takes away from the current business that they have. So I don't know how MoviePass is going to be able to get around that. I I have severe PTSD. This was a program that I was raving about before it ever went to Unlimited because I paid at the time 50 bucks, which A-listers, you got it good. (laughs) I I paid for Unlimited. I paid 50 bucks a month and, you know, I still got the benefit from it. And then they dropped it down to what? 10 it was just insane there's no way that was financially viable i don't even understand how they thought that was a good idea so that burned the whole program out and scrapped it the best thing that came out of movie pass is that it created things like a list for amc where you can pay was it 25 bucks a month for yeah a little under 23 i think if you're in a major major metropolitan area it's two tickets it's two tickets so, I mean, you, you get your money's worth if you see three movies a month. Even if you don't go to three a week, you get your money's worth at three movies a month. That's that's a deal to me. That's a great deal. Movie Pass, I want anything that's going to make it easier for people to see movies. If this helps, like to Choice Point, if you get, you know, X number of credits and then you can actually take, you can buy more tickets than just yourself. Maybe you buy two or three or four tickets. That would be fantastic. Great for everyone. Whatever gets people going to the movies, I'm excited for. I just don't trust MoviePass can do it without screwing it up and making me hate their name again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anything that gets them going to the, you know, filling the seats back up, I'm I'm good with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, I just, yeah, I just don't trust the people running, running MoviePass at this point. I'm not convinced anybody's running it. I'm convinced there's there's <laughs> monkeys with darts and a board, and they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> Ten bucks. Ten dollars. <laughs> That's how it works. Well, and this said co-founder Stacy Spikes, and I'm like, this is the first time I've ever heard of the name Stacy Spikes in the entire debacle since Movie Pass was created. So, what do you mean co-founder? <laughs> Would you want your name out there? I'd hide it too. I'd change it to I don't know Napoleon Dynamite. Maybe Stacy did change their name. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> well, speaking of things that didn't go well, uh, Regal Cinemas might be filing Chapter Eleven, and they said. And I quote again, in response to media speculation, Cineworld and Regal Regal Theaters globally are open for business as usual and continue to welcome guests and members. The strategic options through which Cineworld may achieve its restructuring objectives include a possible voluntary Chapter 11 filing in the United States and associated ancillary proceedings in other jurisdictions as part of an orderly implementation process. Gotta love the big words on Brad. Cineworld. It's in discussions with many of its major stakeholders, including its secured lenders and their legal and financial advisors. In other words, we might file chapter 11 if it keeps us going, right? That's what you guys are reading? Yeah. Bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to be around, but at the same time, it's a good yeah. opportunity to be like, I can file chapter 11, or maybe I could just figure out some way to sell half of this to AMC and half of this to, to Cinemark. Yeah. I hope they get it sorted out. Um, Regal is my local theater of choice. Oof. Aaron, 
Oof. Is that where the 40X theater we went and saw Jurassic yep. World is? Oh, yep. stay open, baby. Work it out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really, really rooting for them. And like, like Troy says, you know, just because it's, and, and like they said, it's a possibility. It doesn't, of course, that's the, that's what catches your eye when you in a headline is filing bankruptcy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that gotcha little thing, but yeah, I hope they, I hope they sort it out. I hope they, however they, it, it, uh, however they can do to, to structure going forward to where they're, they're solid again and, and, and profitable. I wish them all the best. I hope they can do that. Cause I really like their product and they offer more than just some vibrating seats and, <laughs> You know, plush well, cushions. When you say it like that, well, this is true. It does. <laughs> there are certain this, movies I really want to experience 40 X on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Showgirls. Yeah. Um, why not? Why not? <laughs> Let's give it a whirl. Is that glitter? Jesus. Is, geez, why? This is, it said water spraying in my face, but I'm not hey, sure. Hey, hey, hey. Wow. That took a turn. Uh, also, <laughs> As long as Regal's in business, that helps keep A-list in business. So everybody that's an AMC fan should be pulling for Regal. You want competition. Always, always, always. Helps with the bills, man. Yours. Is Regal more prominent in certain parts of the country than others? Yeah. 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 They have more controlled markets than others. I think they have more of a rural focus where I think AMC has a lot more uh, big city theaters. But uh, Regal's all over. And we got one in town here, and I don't think I can remember the last time. I think the last time I went to that theater was the midnight showing of Two Towers. Ooh. That was a minute ago. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, we got to mention that. Okay. Uh, Regal, get your stuff to get your act together. Um, move, <laughs> moving on. So Troy is going to go see the Ring. Is it Rings of Power? What's the official yep, title? The Rings of Power. Rings of Power. The Lord of the Rings series. They're actually going to premiere two episodes in theaters on August 31st on a big screen at seven o'clock central. Ooh. In Cinemark theaters. It's an exclusive, correct? Yeah. This will be the first time I've been in a non AMC theater in a long time. I feel like I'm cheating on uh, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick of that commercial, man. I am so sick of that. Commercial. People now st- people now stand up and like do the pledge of allegiance for the Nicole do they? Kidman. Act. I'm doing that. I've never That's thought awesome. of it. That's- that is awesome. That's there was amazing. actually a, there was actually a a Thursday night showing that I went to, and the Nicole Kidman ad did not play because I think it was like right when they were trying to broker the deal to continue the ad. Why they had it play in the theater for their own theater, I still don't understand that concept. But <laughs> they played the ad at the end of the movie, at the end of the credits, and everybody cheered because <laughs> they were like, "Yeah, it's Nicole!" Oh my god, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, well, you've already got your ticket secure, but you said it was pretty much sold out, right? When you went, and got- I was I was in line at eleven oh one, and I was twenty minutes in the queue before I got to buy my ticket. And wow. when I went to buy my ticket, it's only one theater in the entire Northwest Chicago area that's playing this because there's not that many Cinemark theaters either in the area, um, and it was gone. So I am sitting in a wheelchair seat where I have to bring my own wheelchair. Can you just bring like a camping chair or something? Yeah, they're not. It's a space. It is a empty space for so a wheelchair person. Does it have to be a wheelchair? Can you just say like I, I am handicapped, but I also yeah. like my 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 camping my, chair my better. Comfort. Yeah, <laughs> which was funny then because just I went back in to make sure that was the case. And when I went back in, then the companion seat next to the wheelchair seat was open, so I also booked that. So I have two tickets. Well, now you have a show. chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Some major Sauron magic going on here. Wow. That'll that'll be cool. I think that's very exciting. I think Game of Thrones missed a window of opportunity here. Brian, you For could sure. have saw uh House of the Dragon in a theater. Wouldn't that have been amazing? That ooh. There's a couple of scenes there that would would have looked pretty awesome on a big screen. Well, I think that with how successful I think this went because of the ability to like not get a seat at all until the very, very end in that wheelchair spot, mm-hmm. then um, maybe they'll do this for like the finale of House of the Dragon. Could be a potential. I would go for sure. I mean, based on what I've seen so far, I feel like I would go. Yeah. A couple other, a uh, couple hundred other like-minded people all kind of cheering for the same thing or ooh and ah and at the same time. You yeah. know what I would love? Let's do season eight 
finale in a theater because then you get a, a whole bunch of different reactions. That could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> some just reacting violently, some loving it, some crying. It'd just be all over the place. It'd be madness. I'd watch that. <laughs> Can we do the oh. uh, long night in the uh, AMC Prime Theater because you know it's real black instead of the compression black? Oh, that'd be that'd be great. That'd look good. Yeah, it. Yeah, it looks better on. I, and I can vouch, it does look better on 4K Blu-ray than it did on. Yeah, than the compression, the streaming. It's it's amazing how I have zero problem seeing anything in 4K for that. Looks great. It's actually like oh, a yeah. fantastic episode of television. But on but on compression, when you're watching when it aired. I get where people were upset. Yeah, it, it looked pretty bad. All the pixelations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not good. Not good. Even well, Dragon was a little dark, I thought, this week in some places. Yeah. I yeah, just even, 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 yeah, even looking at some of the, like, was like the faces, they just weren't lit well enough. And yeah, I know it was, it was atmospheric and all that. But even when they're outside of the, the jousting stuff, they still, it still looked like it was like perpetually. Flat. Super, super overcast. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very rainy. Gosh. We're not quite rainy. Snowstorm? Yeah. Well, though, it's, it's coming, so probably. Right? 200 well, years. 200 years later, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no hurry. No hurry. <laughs> hey, speaking of theaters, how do, how do you feel about the movie theater experience this summer and the movies that were delivered? Do you guys feel like it was a bit like old times, or did you find more enjoyment at home watching TV? Um, a couple of movies really, it, yeah, it kind of felt like it was okay. We're, we're back to normal top gun being the, probably the best experience the for me anyway. So that really kind of felt like it was kind of like it used to be people excited, oh. people surprised. I mean, there was all the cheering, I mean, for, you know, the movie and everything and, and some of the other movies that like the Jurassic and, and a couple others, however, but, but top gun is really, when I saw that, that's what really felt like okay this is a good summer blockbuster movie this felt good this is why you come to the movies and i know i went back a second time for it and i can't tell you how many friends on facebook and stuff that aren't even really movie people went back three or four times it stayed in the top five all summer all summer that doesn't happen anymore it doesn't happen anymore no, no. Our our attention spans are so short these days and, and we're so quick to move on to whatever's next. So it yeah, that was a pleasant surprise. So yeah, it felt good to be it felt good to be in a uh in a tent pole type of movie where where everything was everybody was excited. And that energy really helps uh when you you know, you're watching something. And you saw Top Gun Maverick, correct me if I'm wrong, in four D X, which yeah. for people that don't know what four D X is, it's where it's almost like a theme park. Your your seat moves with the action. There is water that sprays on your face. There's wind blowing. There, like there's, it, it, there's it, lightning. There's snow. There's kind of there's these little things that that touch your feet. I don't know really why they do that, but it yeah, does I don't add like something. That one. That's very uncomfortable. <laughs> but but there, yeah, there's there's probably fifteen different things that that are going on or can go on throughout the course of the movie, depending on the environment and the action. But yeah, it's not just like a vibrating seat. It's, it tilts you forward. It tilts you back. It's, it gives the illusion that you're flying in a jet or flying through space, wherever, you know, whatever type of movie you're, you're in or bouncing across an uneven terrain in a, in a alter, in an all terrain vehicle, like in Jurassic park or something. It feels insane. like you got whiplash, but in Did they give insane. you an extra bag along with the bucket of your popcorn? Well, that's what I told Aaron. He was getting this big old thing of popcorn. I'm like, dude, you better eat it yeah. quick. That's what he <laughs> says. Better eat it fast. I'm like, what are you talking about? I can hold on my popcorn. And the first, as soon as the movie starts, <laughs> dear word. I get it. I get it. I get where it's coming. I couldn't imagine seeing Top Gun in that theater because just the movement from racing in a car, I can't imagine the way that the dog fights and whatnot. I just oh, yeah. feel like that would yeah. be insane and get your equilibrium. All messed up. And the part where they're going like straight vertical up that mountain stuff, oh. and, and the seat goes goes back, and the wind's blowing, and it's yeah, it's like love to do that. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. God, it's so fantastic. You know, and when kind of need a the stuff's blowing on your feet and everything. All I kept thinking is, is Tarantino down there? What <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that was uh, obviously that specific theater really kind of helps but for the most part just the general sense that the seats were filled for such an exciting movie 
and the movie turned out to be well loved, obviously by just mm-hmm. about everybody. Um, that says a lot going forward. Now they just got to keep being consistent with it. Oh man, that movie made so much money. Scientology is going to be around for a lot longer. So, <laughs> what did you what did you think, Troy, in terms of the uh, the movie theater experience this summer? I feel like yeah, it- I felt I didn't use my A list at all in April and March. I think I went to two shows in February, but this really felt like there was at least something every month that was worthwhile going to see between Top Gun, Jurassic, Bullet Train. There was definitely a, a, a big tentpole movie every month. So here's hoping that we got something for September lined up. That'll be pretty spectacular. We'll keep that train rolling. Oh, it would be nice. I, I, it felt so good to go back because I go every week no matter what. I just I prefer to see everything in a movie theater. And, you know, for a long time during COVID, there was a, a lot of stuff that, let's be honest, you probably would have been fine never seeing it, let alone seeing it in a big screen. But this summer, I felt like there was always something to watch every single week. There's a lot of fun. I mean, you got Bullet Train. I thought Jurassic Park, even though the story is a little, what? It's still, it's dinosaurs, and that was fun. Um, Thor, I didn't even like Thor, but I still like the experience of going to the theater for it. Top Gun Maverick, Doctor Strange. I mean, there's so many things. out, And then... There's other smaller nope. things. The Black Phone. Nope. Um, just saw Beast. Idris Elba. I don't... The ending is just drove me insane, but the movie as a whole is a lot of fun. Like, it's a great theater experience just going for a matinee because the end might make you throw your popcorn at the screen if you have any left. But it just... I, I felt like summer again. Black Phone was a great theater experience because of the jump scares. and oh, just so good. Having somebody next to you, like, jump at different places than you were jumping at. You don't get that same <laughs> feeling when you're watching it by yourself in your chair at home. Yeah, and I would I would dare say that Black Phone was the better horror experience. I really like Nope. I know some people hated it, but I, I really like Nope, but I think Black Phone was just a bit better because it has a lot of rewatchability where I don't think Nope has as much. I think Nope was really horror though. I mean they classify it as horror because of his past work. It's a lot of blood. But nope. The minute the minute you say aliens, <laughs> you're like, okay, that's not a horror. That's more of a science there's fiction blood. thing. There there's people that are getting killed. What what constitutes horror for you? Uh, jump scares unexpected <laughs> okay everybody has their own definition i guess i mean getting chased around by a giant sombrero the entire time not so scary well you say that till you've been chased around by a giant sombrero obviously you've never been to a donkey show <laughs> <laughs> i'm just letting you know terrifying oh i'm glad i bring out the worst in people all right <laughs> <laughs> Oh, glad okay. to be back. Glad to have you. Let's move on to our From the Outside <laughs> In topic. Well, we, actually, we just got a couple things we're going to talk about. One is, this is Troy Heinrich's insertion here. Whoa. Troy wants to know, why is Aaron such a blank? And then you guys can each fill in what you think that should be. Thanks, Troy. This was obviously much more fun when there was going to be more people. Well, I was going to say, just me and, Brian, and, and the but... rest of you can fill it in. And it's like, well, there's me and Aaron. So... Mm-hmm. <laughs> And Troy, and Troy. <laughs> but now he's kind of singled out because he had to put it on there. What were you trying to say, Troy? It feels like you were trying to direct an insult right at me. So go ahead. You're trying to up. get somebody else to make an insult so you no know blood is on your hands? Is that what's I've what been insulted 10 is? years. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> dumb, dumb, robot, you name it. Yeah, I've been there. That's true. I have called you a dumb dumb a lot. You can do and robot. John Noble even called me a dumb dumb. That's how dumb dumb Aaron is called. Me. <laughs> That's funny. That was funny. Uh, for those that don't know, Aaron got me a cameo from John Noble for my birthday. And John mm-hmm. Noble literally called me a dumb dumb. It's like, what kind of friend calls someone dumb dumb? Some somebody made that request and the fact that he did it. God bless him. <laughs> what a hero hero i say what a hero That's Ryan, awesome. you're the guest why don't you go first wow golly see i gotta be careful because in less than a week <laughs> you'll be we, sleeping <laughs> uh, yeah i'll be sleeping about less than three feet away from him so um yeah those aren't pillows yeah <laughs> right <laughs> Oh, just remember, you usually doze off before I do. So That's a fair point. <laughs> oh, very true. Very true. Oh, why is Aaron such a nice guy? Oh. Because he really kind of hates people in general. Like, you travel with him. He does everything he can to avoid crowds and people. 
you know, you go to a big tourist area, what's he do? He wants to find a hiking trail somewhere out in the middle of nowhere away from everybody. You want to go get a drink? Where does he go? Let's go find this non, you know, descript bar somewhere, hide away from everybody and get a drink. However, the flip side is he's a very charming guy. I don't know how, but <laughs> why is Aaron so likable? Wow. I didn't see it going that way. <laughs> I love you, man. Go ahead, Troy. Insult me now. <laughs> well, mine was, uh, why is Aaron such an idea generator? Oh, geez. Oh, this game oh, is way better than I thought it was going to be. This game makes me feel a lot better than I thought I would feel. <laughs> yeah, because we had to pivot at a dime because of the uh, the sickness and the flooding. So Aaron just like, let's throw this episode together. And when you think back over 499.75 episodes that uh, we have never really double covered a topic. It's nope. always been like a new interesting topic every single week. There might have been one or two crossovers, but if we did a crossover, it was from a different angle. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's true. I go back. Yeah, and- he's a, he's a, he, Aaron's, re- Aaron's really a curious guy. And I think that, that's where a lot of that stems from. I like to look at all sides. That's why he's looking forward to the glass onion. You're just, are you going to keep trying to get a glass onion joke out of that freaking title? You're just going to keep you, going until you get something. Keep, just, they're just going to keep going. Uh, well, thank you both for saying nice things. That was yeah. very sweet. I expect to be my PayPal to get filled up here shortly. Well, I figured, I figured the Westworld and Blacklist fans already, you know, fill in that with the appropriate word that starts with the letter D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or yes, a. yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's let's go to something else. This is really interesting. So, did you see that streaming beat cable for the first time ever? Now, Game of Thrones is an exception. That was, I mean, that blew the doors off. But because it's technically cable and streaming, so I don't even know what you count that one. But it had like ten million viewers for the uh, for the initial release, which is the biggest premiere in HBO and HBO Max's history. But overall, I'm talking in just overall. So what you're saying is scripted shows on HBO are actually a good thing? I just, just want to make sure we put that stamp happens. there. It's weird. Although, what, what did John Oliver say this week? That uh, um, HBO Max, it's not TV. It's it's a it's a clever tax write-off or something like that. <laughs> so exactly right. Streaming did beat cable for the first time ever. So what do you, what do you think about that? In terms of development, that is huge for that market. I think people probably thought it already had happened, but it hadn't yet. I mean... It's hard to like picture it, but I was actually doing this just probably a couple days ago. I actually started looking at all of the things that I own because the sweet deal of Disney Plus for three bucks a month that I got three years ago runs out in November. And I was contemplating whether or not the new Disney pricing along with my Hulu pricing would be totaled enough that it would actually be better to get the bundle with no ads to include ESPN Plus. And then I'm like, well, if I get that bundle, plus I have Netflix, plus I have Prime, and I have HBO Max, like what would it cost to figure out how to get my local channels on, say, Hulu Live or something? And when I started looking at the cable channels that were available, I'm just kind of like, I don't watch anything on any of these channels. Because if I need something on USA or Sci-Fi, I can get that on Peacock. And TNT and TBS have no more scripted programming. Um I don't watch anything usually on Bravo. All of the HGTV, Food Network, all of that stuff is going to be coming to HBO Max through Discovery. So really, the only thing missing is AMC Plus. And it's like, I only need to pay the $8 a month there for a few shows at a time and drop it when I need to. So yeah, it makes perfect sense that at this point in time, the streaming services are the way to go. And cable is basically dead in the water other than delivering the internet. Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I think a lot of people are, you know, especially over the last couple of years, they're they're trimming their budgets a little bit so that that $9.99 a month or even $15.99 for a streaming service versus a hundred bucks to 150 bucks for cable for, like you say, I don't watch any of this stuff. (laughs) So, I mean, it just makes sense. You know, a lot of people are, uh, they're, they're cutting the cords and they're, yeah, you got more and more people watching the different little streaming services and yeah, it just makes sense that more people are watching. It's finally starting to, that pendulum is swinging towards streaming now. I think the one thing that's missing, and I think CBS is the one that's really done the best job with this with Paramount, mm-hmm. is that Paramount Plus allows me to watch the CBS live stream. So you can still get Survivor Night Of. You can still get, you know, all your 
Blue Bloods and all that fun stuff. The fact that you can get the NFL football game on Sunday night on Peacock is nice, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to still watch the NBC, you know, network feed right. on Peacock or watch the ABC feed on Hulu or Disney Plus. Yeah. I think that's the next domino that needs to fall is that when you looked at these numbers, uh, the, the broadcast you know, numbers are way down compared to even the cable or the streaming. So how is broadcast going to survive unless they start offering up their live channels on the streaming services themselves? Yeah, the broadcast is like newspapers. I mean, they're still around. They're still, they're still a market for them, still usable. Yeah. But like you say, you know, once the, once some of these others, like maybe Hulu streams Fox and, you know, Peacock streams NBC or whoever, then yeah, you know, that's uh I just see more and more people moving that way. It's crazy that we're at this point, right? Because God, I mean, I mean, we've all seen it coming, but on the same token, did you ever think in your lifetime you'd see network TV be almost obsolete, which it kind of is. I mean, I think, I feel like people older than us probably still watch a lot of network TV, but I don't know anybody our age and younger that really primarily watches broadcast TV anymore other than for football games. Or sports. Which is why uh, the services like Aereo that was shot down at the Supreme Court and then um, Locast most recently was shot down at the Supreme Court because of football. Both of those court cases literally showed up in the Supreme Court in the month of August just before football season because the big networks were trying to say, no, you're rebroadcasting our stuff without rights. So you're really just becoming a cable company and not paying the cable carriage fees where really, if you think about it from an FTC standpoint, I have a public right to the airwaves and the content on those airwaves. So why don't I have a public right to consume that airwave data in the way that I want to consume it? And I think that's the biggest challenge we're facing right now. So maybe the what we need to do really long term is, you know, we cut off the television from broadcasting over those airwaves and we somehow repurpose that airwave for ubiquitous internet for everybody because really that's a, that's what we're talking about now with these streaming services becoming number one. It's not that I need free television over the air. I need free internet and then let me get whatever I need on the internet the way I need to get it. Well, you're like Atticus Finch over here. Um, it's like, you know, since we had the airwaves, why do not we allow ourselves to consume said airwaves? <laughs> I mean, think about it. It's like a it's like a Star Trek moment, right? If we had free internet for everybody, and it was at a speed and pattern that was you know sustainable. I mean, we don't know how fast the internet needs to go in the future, but like for right now, if we had like ubiquitous five G, ultra wide, enhanced, whatever it ends Ooh, up being, that's sexy. And nobody had to pay for internet, right? Internet just was, and then you just pay for the services on the internet. We could really advance society, I think. So what hmm. happens? What happens next? D- does broadcast television actually become obsolete and go away do they do they have a market anymore i mean yeah there's always gonna be people that want those free channels but you can't even get it free anymore you can't get it with an antenna well i guess you can some of them but overall most people can't and really you can't get it unless you're like you know 10 miles from the tower because everybody's in these you know townhome condo megaplex there's so many people drawing down that signal in the area that it's becoming very difficult to pick up your over the air unless you have an antenna up on your roof, which looks like shit. Hmm. It does look like shit. Those dish things didn't, don't look great either. <laughs> Just, no, I mean, it, it's why cable TV was invented was that I was down in the valley. I couldn't get the signal. So I put the tower up on top of the hill, picked up the signal and ran the cable from the tower down into the community. That's how cable TV started back in the 1970s. Look at this guy. Bring oh, facts. Geez. Bring in the history. Good Lord. I barely even read this article. He went from like <laughs> forward thinking generations to history in like yeah. the blink of an eye. God. I'm very proud of you. Which is why things like low cast failed. Oh crap. Really now he's going. That's what they were doing. <laughs> he's like a wind up toy. Now we pulled a string. Yep. Pulled a string. <laughs> there he just, goes. Just this low cast. <laughs> <laughs> Five bucks a month to get my locals. It was good. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you think about it, do you think that, broadcast tv is done can they be sustainable in this market when people don't want to watch ads anymore people like that's a main reason why people have made the switch not not just ease and content i think it has to do with ads too a lot of people were just sick of watching ads and 
You'll never make me go back. I probably won't watch a TV show with ads again. No, no. If something's five ninety nine and I can pay nine ninety nine for no ads, I am paying nine ninety nine. Yep. And I would probably pay more, but don't tell them because they will charge us more. But. <laughs> don't tell them. Don't tell them. I mean, they know it already, but you know. Well, and it's really a question of what's broad, what is defined as broadcast now, because technically you're not broadcasting prime time. You're getting the feed from your local channel, which is the broadcast. It's and the big four transmitting the big four shows. The big four could put that content anywhere. They, they don't can even have to give it to the local market. Technically they can, right, but Atticus, right now they're they st- going a little deep there. Yeah, they're going a little deep, but right now that is still <laughs> what they do. And that's what I'm asking. Like, is there enough market to sustain the big four prime time as we become accustomed to it where you have the fall release dates. I and- think it's, I think it's going to come full circle. I think again, we're all, we're all um, going to streaming. Those are kind of left back behind a little bit. And in some capacity, I don't know exactly how they're all going to start merging. You know, the bigger ones are going to start eating up the little ones and you're going to get the Amazon package and the Netflix package and whatever. And there's going to be three to five, mega services and they're all going to come back and it's all going to tie back in with the broadcast in some capacity. Again, that's 10, 15 years down the road, but it just, that's just how it works. You've got all the little, you've got, you know, the little fish, some of them grow bigger. They start eating the little ones. And anyway, now we're getting into (laughs) what just happened. We got to, we went to a fishy lesson. I didn't know that was coming. Yep. Went to, oceanography yeah. here but brent's not so. wrong i mean think about it amazon <laughs> buys hbo and then netflix buys paramount and peacock and then hulu's already mm-hmm. disney and boom you're back to the big three yeah i mean yeah who you say like, for instance you say hulu buys paramount and peacock or netflix Is would because hulu's already got disney's already uh, got hulu okay disney's got hulu let's say they buy paramount now they've got two of the bigger brought the two of the brought two of the big four right there they got right. fox and you got cbs so, well, and Walmart just partnered with Paramount. So, I mean, they could even make a push and just buy up one or two streaming services. Just buy is. them up instead of partnering. See, yeah. we're on the verge of that already. Mm-hmm. Everything's going to be mega corporation. I think we're going to have a lot less channels, though. I mean, we will have a lot more content, but it'll be six people that control all the channels as opposed to, you know, now there's an infinite number of channels. And yeah, some of them are owned by, multi- by the same, yeah, prop, same venue, but. Yeah, that's just that's just how the, the world works, man. Yeah, that's you know, we're all we used that to, we used, there used to be a lot of free free music on the internet. You know, <laughs> Napster used to be a thing. Oh, remember, remember the days? <laughs> remember the days, old Napster. <laughs> all right, let's move on to some other. Um, these are actually from Patreon members from patreon.com slash the Hollywood Outsider. Patreon.com slash the Hollywood Outsider. These are people that uh, support the Hollywood outsider and we appreciate everything they do. So movie girl wants to know who are your, who are the best movie, who are the best buddy movie pairings and your dream buddy pairing. That's interesting. First best, best buddy. I got, I got a list. This is literally my genre of choice. <laughs> well, then why don't you start? Yeah. Lead us, lead us off there. Okay. Well, I'm going to go through a whole list. You ready? <laughs> uh, go do You can do a couple. Okay. Yeah. I'm coming yeah, back to my list, whole, though. God damn it! Sure, we'll we'll get into the Justin McCumber, uh, you know, <laughs> extra. There's 12. a callback. Um, <laughs> Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, I think, are, are probably the best buddy duo, and uh, they just perfect oil and water, and also built to in the Lethal Weapon series. They also built this family relationship that I you, you didn't expect at all. You know, especially after the first film. You know, they come to respect each other, but by the second film, they are full on, I mean, best, like brothers. They're full on brothers and it works. I mean, he, Riggs is very close to his family. Uh, he cares very much about everything that happens to his family. He ends up putting, he will put his life on the line in a heartbeat for Danny Glover at any chance he can. So Murtaugh always has a best friend in him and vice versa, even though they don't really have anything similar in terms of personality. They're completely opposite. So they're like the best ones. Um, Billy Crystal and Gregory Hines are always <laughs> from Running Scared are one of my favorite duos. I just think they play off each other magnificently. That was a movie that was way underappreciated. Still kind of bummed that 
didn't get as much love as it did. Uh, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. I, I love the Bad Boys series. I think it's great. I think it's uh, the Reggie scene is one of the best scenes in film history. Any Anybody who's ever had a niece or a child totally understood everything that was happening in that scene. And they, they totally appreciated it and would probably encourage it. You don't know what I'm talking about? No, not I had I had seen that in such a such a long time. Well, that's t- that's really too bad. Okay, how about this? How about Jack Lemon and Malt- Walter Matthau? Sure, grumpy old men. Absolutely, uh, going going back quite some time. Uh, you got um, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. Oh, that's a good one. Iconic, right? Yep. Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. Okay, a little Thelma Louise action. Yep, good deal. Iconic, I think. Yep. <clears throat> Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. I mean, there's there's a lot of them. And even modern day, I mean, Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart, they're kind of, I mean, the Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor of modern years. Well, and their duo just spills over into social media. <laughs> it's not just movies. <laughs> yeah, it's, right? It's all of social media. So, yeah. Uh, Dan, what? Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, the Blues oh, Brothers? Yes. Yep. Great one. Great one. Nick Nolte, Eddie Murphy. Oh, Yep. Oh, and I yeah, don't that know. should have been that should have somehow lasted longer. You mean it had a, a longer series? Yeah, well, I had a yeah, I had had more of it. I I agree. Uh, they kind of blew it with another forty eight hours, didn't really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Woody Harrelson, and Wesley Snipes. I'd put them in that same category of. I wish they would have made more movies together. I I love White Men Can't Jump. I liked Midnight. Um. Oh God, what was it? Money Train. Money Train. Because had Jennifer yeah. Lopez in it, yeah, yeah. Wes, you know, Snipes has an intensity about him, and Woody has that the complete opposite, <laughs> the the laid back chill factor. So, and they're both cool as shit. So, oh, absolutely, yeah, that works. It's a good duo. What do you guys got? I mean, I, I mean, I've still got list. I've got John Travolta and Sam Jackson. I've got Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy, Ice Cube and Chris Tucker. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not really a buddy movie, though. It says best More. buddy movie pairings. If they're not buddies, that's I not, don't know who are. A, be, a buddy movie pairing pair is two, and it's they are the focus. Like you're talking about Riggs and Murtaugh. Friday was more kind of an ensemble. Okay. Would you consider, um, oh God, Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. Um, Midnight, Midnight Run. Run. Midnight yes. Run. Yes. Would you yes. consider that a buddy? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. They're not yeah. really buddies. They don't even like each other for most of the movie. For yeah, but yeah, it's it's a buddy movie. It's it's about the the movie revolves around just those two people. Yeah. Okay. You can even say the fugitive's a buddy movie because it revolves around them chasing each other. No, you couldn't. No. Mm-mm. The fugitive? No. Who's the buddy? You're still in? wearing that. You're still wearing that Atticus Finch hat, ain't you? You're trying to <laughs> you're trying, trying to you're trying to like just wrench it in. I was just trying to help. I was trying to support your definition of like just about the two people. I mean, that well, no, just I about mean the it's two different. People. You know, it's it's two people are you know. On Working together. Right. Yeah. Like if you take out all the other trips going on in Lord of the Rings, it would just be like Sam and Frodo would be a buddy movie. However, there's like, you know, a dozen other side missions going on. So it's an ensemble. But you have the Marianne Pippin buddy movie and then you have the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a. Gimli and. Absolutely. It's a every week of the year. There's a brand new episode for, you know some sort of Lord of the Rings thing, you, you know, fall could be for the, you know, for the Pippin and Mary and others could be throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. Piece of cake. But yeah. yeah. But again, it's an ensemble. You listen to the ants long enough that the colors on the, the leaves change. <laughs> <laughs> the colors on the leaves change. Well, mine was uh, Wilder and Pryor that you already mentioned. Like that, that comedy, the see no evil, hear no evil is just comedy gold. It's so funny. Silver streak. Silver oh, streak. God. They were well suited for each other. They, yep. they just, they have nothing similar in terms of comedy stylings and that's why they work so well together. Yep. Yeah. I mean, kind of a Wilder and Cleavon Little from Blazing Saddles. Just, oh God, excuse me while I whip this thing out. It was just, just <laughs> like, just, just, I'm thinking Gene Wilder and I'm just thinking of how well them two played off each other, even though it's not really, eh, well, it kind of is, but it's not really a buddy movie pairing. Well, and, and Pryor actually taught Wilder how to improvise on camera for the first time when they did Silver Streak. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. That's a fun mm-hmm. fact. Is that true or did you just make that up? 
No, it's true. Okay. It was in a, I think it was a Fresh Air uh, interview they did <laughs> well, back I in. Believe, I believe it's funny you mentioned that, Aaron. I really did just make that up. I was just trying to go with something fresh and new, and thank you for ruining it for me. I wanted to reinvent <laughs> history a little bit. It's just, yeah, absolutely. I just made that up. My name is not Troy, actually. <laughs> It's, I, I've been living that life for a while too. While we're at it, oh. <laughs> Abbott and Costello. Got to mention Abbott and Costello. Oh yeah, Ooh. they count. You don't think they count? I mean, they oh. had movies. I guess. I guess it technically, but yeah, you don't really <laughs> think about. They had re- twenty-seven freaking movies together. They had a ton of movies together yeah, as buddies. You don't really think of them as mu- as movie people. You think of them as Comedians. comedians performers performers yeah i think of them as mo- i haven't seen them outside of movies where else i mean i didn't really you watch their act yeah well you weren't really alive when they were doing <laughs> stand up but they still they count they count <laughs> i said i said it technically counts I, you know you know what your vibe I, completely said the opposite to me your vibe was like hey, i mean maybe if you yeah, want just because they're buddies doesn't mean it's a buddy movie but they were right. buddy movies they were all about those two just riffing off each other I don't, they weren't so much riffing. It was all written. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I mean, I'll give, I'll give it to you. It's, it's, it's. I don't want your pity. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like Troy and Aaron starring in a movie, but it's not really a buddy movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. What else do you guys, either one of you have anything? Oh, man, you took all of mine. <laughs> That's so, why I kind of regret, kind of regret. <laughs> Let the question said that pick your best one and then what's the one you would like to see? Probably should have, but this is literally my genre. Jo- this, this is, is this, my this is genre. A- <laughs> I love I this know, genre. That's why you're filling the Amanda role, coming in with all your honorable mentions. It's, yeah. <laughs> and there were still more. I just, I stopped. Well, go go on with, go with a couple. Uh, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. Those were too obvious. Yeah. So I waited, you know, but Tango and Cash always deserved a sequel. Always. Jonah Hill and Michael Cera. What were they? What were they, a buddy? Super movie? bad. Super bad. Eh, still kind of ensemble, but all right. Okay. Okay. How about Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum? 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street. Okay. Buddy. Yes. That's a buddy. Okay. Yeah. Those two were great together. All right. I will even say a newer one, Mark Wahlberg and Winston Duke in Spencer Confidential. I kind of love those two together. Yeah. I'm a Winston Duke fan, so whatever. Yeah. Oh, man. He's great. <laughs> Just... It was Black Panther. It was Black Panther. Uh, Wakanda Forever at Comic Con. Every, everybody that was doing interviews, he would just show up and pop up behind them, kind of like Merlin from Arrow, you know, and just pop up out of nowhere. And then <laughs> he just saved the interview if it was getting a little uncomfortable, a little awkward. People were having a hard time because they had to talk about Chadwick Boseman and all that. And he just, bam, saved every single one. Just guy's a bright light. Absolute bright light. Hmm. Uh, those are probably my, the biggest ones that I can. Those are those are the that's the majority of my list. It's a good list. You forgot Turner and Hooch, <laughs> Jim Belushi and <laughs> Canine. <laughs> now he just run through people and dogs. Why not? They count as people. Jenny Tatum and his dog. Would Fast and the Furious count? No, no that's ensemble. ensemble. Yeah. I mean the first one. The first the one. First one. Nope. You don't think so? It, no. no. Okay. You know, they become yellow. buddies by the end, but they're the two leads. But it's not. They they are not on necessarily the same journey you know it's more about them coming together i like when you make it sound so much deeper than it really could ever be they're on the same (laughs) journey the same path toward enlightenment and family (laughs) family all right so so throw it this way what is your dream buddy pairing and i guess modern dream because you don't want to pick dead people that'd just be weird i want a space comedy that could be cops it could be uh, space garbage men or garbage people because I want oh, like, Ron like Ron work? Funches, Ron Funches, and Ooh. Fortune Femster. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're two stand-up comedians. They're both. Um, they've they've done some acting. Ron Funch, you know you. I know you've seen Ron Funch. He's he's a black guy. He's got the really high voice. Again, he's a stand-up comic. Um, F U N C H G S S. And Fortune Femster, um, tall. And, yeah, I know. Tall, yeah, she's, yep. she's, yeah, she's I know hilarious. She uh, I want the two of them in some kind of buddy cop. Maybe, a, like I said, could be in outer space. It could be whatever. I don't care. Both of them, too. Both of those people are hilarious. 
they're decent actors. I want something where them two are paired up together. <laughs> I just like how they're both hilarious. They're decent actors. I just want to well, see. Well, I mean, they're. I mean, they're. They're. They're not a list. They're. They're. No, they're not. You know. They're. They're. You know. Okay. I, I, okay. They're okay. This is going to be collision course again. Remember that movie with Pat Morita and Jay Leno? That's what it sounds like right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I don't care like, what I don't care what to do. I want them two together. I think they would be just phenomenal. You think like something like Nothing to Lose? Uh, man, oh, Tim I, Robbins. I don't know. Yeah, Martin Lawrence. That was a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, it could be, a, you know, that's probably what would end up happening is one of those, like, all right, here's here's like $5 million to go play with. Just make something we can throw out there. That's probably what would happen. But both of them two cracked me up. And, and Ron Funch is like, he starts, he, I th- he's funny, probably basically because it's almost like he just cracks himself up. So the laughter is contagious. And therefore, you know, you're laughing and having a good time. So give me those two together. All right. Sorry to be so obscure. I didn't have <laughs> The Rock and Jason Statham on a you know romantic <laughs> well, the, Venice Italy been done. <laughs> gondola tour. All right, it sounds good. I want to go see uh, Space Cows with Ron, whoever, and Fortune, whatever. <laughs> and Ron and Fort Ron Fortune and somebody Ron's else, Fortune. Whoever he's, we're gonna call it Ron's Fortune. They're treasure hunters. <laughs> done. And as somebody who watches stand up, I'm surprised you. Don't know. I know once I, once I looked him up when I saw his credits, I'm like, oh, okay, I know who he is. Yep. Yeah. I got it. All right. I knew Fortune off the top of my head just because it's a weird name. It's easy to remember. Yeah. How about you, Troy? Well, now that we've been kind of teased with this pairing twice this summer, <laughs> um, Brad Pitt and Channing Tatum doing an, a, the Italian job type of movie. <sighs> All right. I'm sold. I would watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather see that than another Ocean's Eleven remake. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see they're doing another one with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling? That's why I brought yeah. it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at you. Timely as hell. Yep. Look at that. Timely current, as hell. Current with the current with the information. Okay. Oh, just well, like old times. My my dream team, you know, I, I try to stay away from it's really hard to not have Ryan Reynolds be like part of a team just because he's the best wisecracker in Hollywood. But because of that, I'm leaving him off my team because honestly, you compare without anybody, it's going to be fine. I want Bradley Cooper, who I think is equally charming and funny, and Walton Goggins. I think that would be a very <laughs> yin and yang kind of team up. That could be a lot of fun. And I want like a midnight run style comedy where it's one's trying to catch the other one and they have to work together to escape some evil foe. And they, you know basically come together because of it maybe a midnight run remake i don't know but those are the two I, w- I would love to see them work together i think um bradley cooper can do just as sarcastic as ryan reynolds and walton goggins can play a great straight man and also just go batshit insane and just dominate so those two together i think is, is like my dream team that's pretty good i'd watch that i'd watch it yeah well, i mean i watch anything with with really either one of them and i, w- I would like to see bradley Cooper do more light stuff. I know he's been, he's on a run of like some emotional, heavy, yeah, dark, uh, you know what? Do another A team type of movie, lighten it up a little bit. Oh my God. He's so perfect in those movies. And I, I still keep saying, even though Indiana Jones, my favorite film franchise, hunt a billion percent, I still say I would be totally okay passing the reins or the whip to Bradley Cooper. Because I just feel like he has all of it in spades. Yeah, I'd be down with that. You got my approval. <laughs> well, sweet. We need a running scared remake. Mm, that's dicey. Who would you who would you put in it? I don't know. I was thinking your two guys would fit that. Maybe I could see that. I could see running scared. I that's one of those movies. I just wanted to live as it is. You know, Gregory Hines didn't have as many top line notable roles as a lot of other actors got a chance to same with Billy Crystal. A lot of his stuff was, you know, more ensemble pieces, city slickers, even when Harry met Sally is really more about the content than it is him. You know, he's not really the star. It's more about men and women and friends and da da da. da. I, <laughs> I, I kind of like that movie existing as its own, but, but that's also cause I'm a huge fan. I don't think they could do it again as well. Huge. Well, and Billy even shot it down, right? Because there was the sequel that was still running. They never got a script for still running. <laughs> would have been, would have been great. 
Just do another L chase. That's all I have to do. I got a question for you. Who, I'll give you one actor. Who would you pair with this actor for whatever type? It doesn't matter. The type of movie doesn't really matter. Just Ooh. who, Okay. who would, who could you see making a great buddy movie with Tom Cruise? And I, I asked this because if you think about it, he's a much better individual actor. He doesn't need to really play off of anybody. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to come back to an earlier mention. I'm going to say Winston Duke. I think you need somebody who can control the screen just as much as him, even maybe more so. Interesting. I think Winston Duke is just one of those guys where I think he's infinitely cool when he's on screen and he just, he doesn't have to do a whole lot to, to be the guy that everybody wants to watch on screen. And I think Tom Cruise has the same thing and you can love him or hate him, whatever, however you feel about him. He is that guy. And he's been doing yeah. it for 40 freaking years. So good luck making that argument against it. He, people <laughs> like Tom Cruise. They just love him. And I think Winston Duke has Guilty. the same kind of effect. Yeah. Same here, man. I don't, yeah, I ain't yeah. going to apologize for it. Tom Cruise is a, is a great actor. He knows how to entertain an audience. People give him so much grief, but I don't know any other actor who puts so much into their, their And craft. demands so much out of the people around him. So yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, again, he's somebody you think of individually all the time, but somebody, yeah, somebody that would go with him. Troy, you I throw, got him um, I throw Timothy Oliphant in there. Hmm. Oh, oh. Now you are cooking with gas. Now That's, we're cooking with gas. A lot of swagger in one room. Yeah, but, yeah. What do you got, Brian? Who would you put up with? The Cruz. Nicole Kidman? <laughs> <laughs> You know, sure. If it's some sound of like weird erotic movie, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Have they done anything like that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think they have. <laughs> have they? Okay, all right. I've seen it, but <laughs> I would probably go with somebody I, who's his. Some of his movies are on par with Tom's, Tom Cruise's. So, how about uh, Daniel Craig? Oh, that could be interesting. Mm. You know, they've both carried major franchises, action sure. stuff. Um, he's, you know, they could, it could be some kind of whatever charming spy movie or something like that. You know, uh, almost a, uh, maybe a more serious version. Oh, oh, I've got it. Uh, oh, gosh. The, the, the. Oh. You sure you got it? Michael Kane, Michael Kane, the they're they're swindlers, they're they're um Oh Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? Eighties. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, yes. Ooh. Them two in the remake ish of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Sorry, I went I'd all like Rain that. Man, kind of <laughs> except without the information. <laughs> you did. You did. Dirty, <laughs> dirty, definitely dirty. Dirty. <laughs> dirty, dirty, they're dirty, they're dirty. <laughs> and drinks, and there's tuxedos. What's the movie? Which one of them is going to stick a cork on a fork and stick it in their eye? That's what I want to know. Again, it's it's remake ish. You know, one of them. You know, it's not like you're you're rehashing Simple Jack, but um, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing. That's the name that comes to mind easily, but not Michael Caine. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, give me yeah, Daniel Craig. So again, this was just random random thought as we were talking about the other stuff, but. Be cool to see them like do color money together, like a continuation of that. Oh, where he's yeah. he's the Paul Newman character, and it's a, somebody younger. Yeah he's, yeah, he's passing it on to, to somebody. Yeah, yeah, just carry, yeah, just carry on the uh, from the hustler to color of money to whatever this the third one would be. Yeah, D- Daniel Craig and Tom Cruise in a remake of Indecent Proposal. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quit you. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> what just happened? Because I, Aaron's like, I don't know what I don't know what's happening. Before this gets any more off the rails, let me find out what's next on the list here. <laughs> this is already pretty off the rails. But before we go more off the rails, hey, we got to mention since we're talking about Tom Cruise, see Top Gun Maverick in theaters, and now you can bring it home on digital. Tom Cruise stars in the spectacular, action-packed epic, which critics are calling one of the greatest movies ever made. Buy Top Gun Maverick on digital now. Dive into 110 minutes of incredible behind-the-scenes bonus content. It's available at participating retailers rated PG-13 from Paramount Pictures. And like we've been saying this entire podcast, best movie of the summer, I think, hands down. Easily. 
Absolutely. Maybe of the year. I, I It's definitely in the running for best movie of the year. Yep. And with everything that it put forward, it should at least get a nomination. Oh, you Oscars. You better not just wuss out. It's an action movie. Tom Cruise can't be. No, I think it should be in the running for sure. 100%. Yeah. That's a great film. Cinematography alone. Oh. Save movie theaters, as far as I'm concerned, because they, they a lot of movies have made a lot of money at the box office. How many movies have been going all freaking summer? <laughs> all but summer. You, you add all of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And they still don't reach and, Top Gun. Right, and they still don't reach Top Gun money. Yeah. Oh, insane. <laughs> that was like Spider-Man money, man. That movie did great. Uh, Jay Howard, and we're going to go through some of these a, a little quicker, but Jay Howard, who is better, Mulder and Scully... Kirk and Spock or Holmes and Watson? Uh, mine's pretty easy. It's going to be Holmes and Watson because Holmes, Sherlock Holmes is my favorite character. I know that was a close one, though, for you. I mean, you sweated that one a little bit. Nope. Not, Holmes and yeah. Watson by Cause, a mile. Because X-Files is your thing, too. Yeah, but Holmes and Watson, that, those, are my, those are my boys. Yeah, I got to go with Holmes and Watson. It just It's got the Cumberbatch factor. <laughs> I love me some Cumberbatch. I just go, I go literary, but I'll take any, almost any of the iterations. Yeah, I was- I was gonna say Cumberbatch is what put it over the top. That's <laughs> okay. They, he wouldn't be uh, my he wouldn't be my favorite Sherlock Holmes. Nobody asked you that. Shut okay. Up. All right. All right. Continue, <laughs> Troy. Uh, Kirk and Spock, just because of uh, you know Rathacon and the finale between the two of them. That's that's just beautiful. So does that mean Into that... Darkness counts too? Because it's the same damn <laughs> same damn story. <laughs> it has the Cumberbatch. So according to Brian, yeah, <laughs> it's the same story. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, here's an interesting. What's the last book you guys have read? Um, mine would be Green Lights from Matthew McConaughey, which I highly recommend if you really want to just feel better about your life. Uh, like initially, I was like, "What's a book?" Mm. Uh, I read Alan Watts, the book. What's that? Uh, Alan Watts was like an uh, Eastern philosopher. Well, Western philosopher that turned Eastern philosophy into Western understanding. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit more on like like how to live your life in a kind of like a, a Buddhist way. Um, just some really interesting things in there. He talks about an uh, example would be how do you define what space is or what a rock is, or I think it's a ball in the book. But basically, like you don't know the ball is a ball unless there's space, and you don't know that space is space without the ball. So like things exist in order to define each other. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, the last one that I read was the war of art by Stephen Pressfield. Hmm. It's uh, he's, I've read a few of his books. Most of them have, have dealt with history. He's the guy that wrote the, the legend of Bagger Vance. Um, what else? A couple of them that have been turned into movies. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a base, it's a self-help book. Just kind of, um, kind of break through some, your, your, whatever, like mental blocks and stuff that, that kind of hold you back. So uh, definitely highly recommended. So yeah, the war of art, Stephen Pressfield. Okay. Do you guys, uh, do you think the next bond should be in his early thirties? I think that she or they should be whatever makes the most sense for the age, for the story being told from a practical standpoint. Well, the person has to have enough age to have experience because 007 is, has a reputation is well known throughout the world, throughout the industry. Uh, so it's got, you know, the character has to have a little, some age to, uh, so, but young enough to be able to do all the crazy stuff. So I don't know why 30. Yeah. Why not the thirties makes sense. Uh, whatever gets me another James Bond movie. I'm fine with it. Yep, and be young enough to carry all four without aging too fast throughout the course of the shooting. Uh, maybe. I mean, I think you could be forties and you still get four movies. That's like twelve, thirteen years, fourteen years. Be all right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, unless you're like, you know, Tom Cruise fifties. Or oh you my know. god, you can go twenty seven years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Jesus, he really does. <laughs> He's a vampire. He just drinks the blood of the youth. <laughs> <laughs> uh what's the best movie theater experience you've ever had from nate bruce example is having a waiter bring you a menu and things like john has had with his servants that's funny that's true 
Brian, Brian and I have been there for that experience, and it is very <laughs> yes, much like a little bougie for my liking. Yeah, yeah. I don't need cloth napkins <laughs> and le- like straight up silverware. Yeah, I, I just they Give bring a little tray to put your little popcorn on because you know, do said, would you like some popcorn? No, <laughs> get out of here. It's weird. <laughs> what do you, what do you got for best movie theater experience? Anybody got anything? I, mean, I don't know if it would be like the theater experience itself, but I was fortunate enough to be able to see a showing at uh, the Grauman Theater in Hollywood, as well as the Cinema Dome, the Panasonic Cinema Dome, which also was run by Arclade at the time and mm. had real butter for the popcorn. So the Cinema Dome experience was probably a little bit higher just because of the real butter. Wow. Wow. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Hmm. What about you there, Peterson? <clears throat> um, okay, so I'm going to pull in Amanda. I'm going to throw two out there. One is an experience, and one is the actual uh, movie attending experience. One is just from the whole day. Um, so we'll call it a 0.5 and a 0.5. One is uh, when, uh, at South by, both are at South by Southwest. Both things happen at South by Southwest. One, uh, leaving Westworld, going to the American Animals premiere, and drunk as that, hell that whole that should have been a movie yeah the whole thing the whole day was a movie yeah <laughs> felt like yep. we go to the westworld experience uh we're there as we're there as press weren't we we're there as, yeah we were there as press yeah and we stayed the whole day we were only supposed to be there for two hours but we, they kept serving us so we kept drinking and we were completely <laughs> drunk and then we had to rush to see to get to this movie premiere and it was american animals so we rush out, we get there, we get, we get to a, a cart. Was it like a, <laughs> we got, yeah, we got halfway because we got to the, we the convention late. center. Yeah. yeah we, we, we had center, less yeah. than 10 minutes to get there. And yep. lo and behold, there was a, there was a freaking bicycle rick- cart. Yep. Rickshaw. That was actually an American animals freaking thing. So <laughs> the, the producers or whatever were actually on that same cart going to the same movie premiere and they invited us to the after party. So we got to go to the movie. I slept through most of it. And then yes, we got to did. go to the after party. <laughs> it had more free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic day. One that of the best was, days ever. Yeah, that really was like straight up one of the best days of my life. That is, oh gosh, that day was so amazing. The Westworld, the Westworld thing, just off the chain, the detail with that. Secret doors, you hide, you push a secret button in this, old Western building and this door opens up and you see somebody working on the, the hosts in the, you know, in the back, you know, with the white stuff and just the lab coats and then it closes. And then you had mail, they had mail for legit mail made out to you. Yeah. Yeah. They had mail prepared letters. for you when you got there, actual letters for Westworld. world. And this was for season two. And I th- yeah, I think I sent one to Troy. He's holding one yep. up to the camera. Yep. I'm, like, I'm like, did HBO send me a postcard? I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand. You could pull out postcards and they send it. Yeah, it was great. That Um, was, that was so cool. That was so cool. Yeah, that was an amazing, that was, (laughs) that whole day was just amazing. And, and poor Aaron, he was so wiped out. Oh God. I was, he was so wiped out. I didn't let him sleep until we started snoring in the, in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's very uncomfortable for everyone around me, I'm sure. (laughs) Um, But it was a great day. I remember parts of it a lot. Uh, but uh, just the, just the absolute crazy possibilities that happened. Like we got to stay there all day. They they wanted us to stay there. Like we weren't. They didn't ask us to leave or anything. And then we got back and we ran out of time. And we get we got so lucky with the cart. And then we got so lucky because the producers of the movie were on the cart. And then they invited us to the after party. <laughs> we went and watched the movie. Well, Brian watched the movie. And then we went right to that after party. It was just like a fantastic day from start to finish. And the after party was just cool as hell. So I mean. Yeah. That, that's easily the best theater experience without actually watching the movie. My my favorite experience actually watching a movie was at South by Southwest. Uh, actually, with Amanda for this one, went and saw a movie called Long Shot with Charlize Theron and Seth Rogen. And Charlize Theron walked right by me. Uh, Seth Rogen walked right by me. Just she is so gorgeous in person. It's not just on TV, man, and in movies. She is gorgeous. And so the movie was great, had a, just a fantastic time, a wonderful Q&A, and then Boys to Men popped out and did a whole impromptu concert. Insane. Absolutely insane. 
<laughs> okay, so whatever Aaron had two, then I do have a second one. <laughs> Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. My, my second one was actually with Aaron. Aww. And we saw um, A Quiet Place in the theater. And that was just great. that theater experience was just fascinating of like how nobody breathed the entire movie. <laughs> the and everybody quietest. ate their popcorn one kernel at a time and tried to like just do like the as melt quiet on your tongue, as possible. not chomping or anything, just letting it kind of dissolve. <laughs> it, melt. <laughs> it was it was such a neat experience. It was. Yeah. I've never seen a theater that quiet before. I've never heard a theater that quiet that quiet before. I mean you could literally hear the pin drop in that theater. Wow. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to go with, I, yeah, I think really both of mine have got to be South by Southwest because I'm, since you, y'all got two, I'm going to do two. Um, <clears throat> first one is the baby driver premiere. Really? Yeah. Uh, that was, yeah, I was really, first of all, I mean, I didn't sit next to John Hamm, but he was what right across the aisle from me. Is that what it was? Yeah, he, he was, was like literally right across the aisle. You kept staring yeah, at him, very uncomfortable. I did. Yeah. It was weird, but it's okay. Um, it's like humping him with eyeballs from across I was, the yeah. aisle. I, 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 yeah, I, I might have molested him a little bit <laughs> um, visually. <laughs> so I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but we were sitting there, but I, I met one of my favorite current directors, currently working directors, Danny Boyle. Oh. I said, I don't care. You know, Aaron's Mr. Hey dude, repress, take it easy, relax. Don't, don't like, don't go bother the, the talent. Don't go bother the, the, yeah. The, so super nice. I'm sure it was all Hollywood nice, but he made me believe that he was, he stood up, shook my hand. We're talking. He's asking me about what, you know, where are you from? What, you know, what do you do? He's all interested in me. Um, love his movies. And the fact that he does so many, just every movie is something different than what he's ever done. He's, he's not stuck in a certain genre. So, uh, yeah, the movie was, I mean, the movie was fun. Ansel Elgort, the star of the movie, high five me when he walked by. <laughs> That's um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was fun. And then of course, what the people have heard, you know, if you've listened to this show for a while, uh, you've heard about my stumbling into the crew of one of the movies being shown, uh, little, little thing, but the short version is, is I just out of ignorance and asking questions got mistaken for part of the crew for a movie (laughs) and, And hijacked it. Hijacked the I premiere. Yeah. So I had a I reserved seats for the rest of our crew, our crew, as I'm doing bunny ears here. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so I had a whole row reserved. Uh the whole time I'm this whole now this trans this goes oh, last over a couple of probably a few hours, really, because uh I didn't know all I knew was I'm just going up there, I'm asking, hey, I'm I'm you know, I've got my press stuff here. Where do I need to go for this movie? It's at this time. They're like, you got to go to this place, ask for this guy. I talk to him. He gives me updates. Next thing I know, I'm hanging out with these guys. They're, I'm telling them what's been going on because this guy keeps coming back asking me about the, is the director here? Is the rest of the crew showing up? I'm playing dumb. I'm answering honestly. I don't know. I haven't heard anything from them. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, yeah, even me and I, you, Aaron, you met me up there. That's the night we saw, you know, Jason Sudeikis. Oh, right. We um, hear his bartender. Yep. Yep. So we went in there, hung out there for a little bit, came back out. You did, went to the left to do your thing. I finally went in and yeah, almost thought I was about to get busted right there at the very end. But they, he said, guy comes up with another woman and he says, Hey, uh, we got a problem. And I said, Oh, the jig is up. <laughs> This is where I go to jail. This is this is it. <laughs> oh, was, you know. So uh yeah, come to find out it was uh the 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 host or the MC had to do a different movie or something like that. So they brought in somebody else and they were just wanting to know how to pronounce the director's name because it was a foreign movie. It was like a Croatian movie. I'm like, absolutely you nailed it. But I had to do like the audio test, the sound <laughs> test for it. You know? So I'm like, yeah, funny. sounds good. Good job, guys. Go team. Go team. Yeah. yeah. That was uh that was just one of those like, look, this is a crazy situation. I'm gonna ride it out till the very end. I'm gonna see how far I can go with it. 
and I'm texting Aaron the whole time. It was just a blast. The guys that were sitting there, they were waiting to go see Logan because that was a movie that was the big movie in the theater at the time. Mm-hmm. And and they were so like they hated to go into the movies because like, you know, the guy was the guy would come in, he'd ask questions and they were just waiting to hear my response. And then once I told them, you know, they were getting a kick out of it and we, we were all just having a good time. It was such a just a just a fun time. So that's so fun. You know, what's what's funny in connection to that is went with this. Is, this is the difference between Brian and Amanda. <laughs> so we went and saw the Lost City. And Amanda was actually doing press for Tony Hawk. So she met, she was, she met Tony Hawk and she was hanging out with Tony Hawk and got mistaken for part of the crew for the lost city, the movie, cause it was premiering right after Tony Hawk. And she, she could have just ran with it, but instead she was very honest <laughs> and said, I'm not, I'm not part of the crew. I'm not part of, oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. And then, you know, escorted her out. I'm like, boy, did you miss an opportunity? You just <laughs> wasted the best opportunity you might ever have. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Absolutely. I would have looked around just like, oh, oh okay, okay, yeah, and just walk right yeah. on in. Where's Channing Tatum? I've got, I've got a soup. Where's he at? <laughs> Where's Sandra? Where's she at? Uh, Andrew Jeeves wants to know, who is the best movie TV sports coach of all time? Ooh. I had a tough one with this, but I kept coming back to uh, Denzel Washington. Remember the Titans? That's... I mean, it's on the Mount Rushmore for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, That'd be my pick. Sings, Herman Boone, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go with Kurt Russell from Miracle. That's also a good one. That's a good one. That's a good You can't go wrong with Kurt Russell. It's <laughs> a great true. movie. It's a great movie. Science. It's such a, I don't care. I mean, you, you know how it ends. You know how it ends. You know how it ends. And you still get chills watching that movie. Tweet if, again. Again. <laughs> I think what I love most about that movie is it's probably the least Kurt Russell movie yeah. in his yeah. catalog. Yeah. Uh, you probably throw Gene Hackman's Hoosiers. Oh, yeah. Classic. For sure. For sure. There, there's so many great coaches in, in movies out there, but Herman Boone is my, I agreed, Mount Rushmore. I mean, he's he's probably the first face, you know, yeah. right. I would see. Uh, TV wise, I always go to Coach Taylor, Friday that, Night Lights. Friday Night Lights, right? Clear ass full hearts can't lose. Mm. I don't know. Can't even think of a TV one at this point. Coach, coach, <laughs> Craig yeah, T. That Nelson. Has, that, I, that's I was trying <laughs> that's to avoid that one, but that's about all I got. <laughs> that's all I got. That's it. Uh, Andrew G's also wants to ask, which I feel is probably going to be self-answering. Do you think Hollywood is starting to run out of original ideas with the constant reboot or updating of oldish movies? Uh, yes. There you go. Yeah, we covered that ad nauseum. We've been talking about that since I was on the show. Yep. <laughs> It's been a long time, a long time. Well, we're going to talk Hello. about House of the Dragon, but first, share your thoughts on this episode or anything else in our Facebook group or on Twitter at Buy Popcorn. Our site is thehollywoodoutsider.com. We will be back with episode 500. on That'll be on September, uh, the week of September 13th, 14th, something like that, whatever the date is. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Um, so look forward to that because next week is going to be a different kind of episode, and then we're taking a week off for Labor Day. So we'll be, we'll, we'll be back. It will happen, I swear. Uh, you can rate and subscribe us on your f- preferred podcast app. You can find John's artwork on Insta and Twitter at R. John Draws, Amanda on Veronica's Marshmallows and Smirk and it Sink Into This, Troy at Troy Henrits, and Beyond Westworld on The Blacklist Exposed, which we do together, and me, I'm presenting Hitchcock and at Aaron Smirks. Now we're going to go to House of the Dragon, but remember, if you don't want to watch it, we're, we're going to talk about spoilers from what we've seen, so just know that going in. If you haven't watched the show, I would tell you to tread lightly trepidatiously if you will and in the meantime for those that don't want to go to that portion remember the next time you head to a theater buy popcorn now house of the dragon um i do want to mention before we start the did you guys see that george rr R. martin is out there like lighting up the showrunners over the shortened show run that the original series got now he's out now that you know, the dust has settled. He's out there just, or the ashes have settled. <laughs> He's out there like, man, I told him go like 10 or 12 years. That ain't on me. You, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but. No, I have not. I don't really care what he's got to say anymore at this point. You know, he's had, he said, what, 40 years to get done with these books. <laughs> yeah. You have no say so anymore at this point. I don't, I don't care. I understand when you're doing art, you can't rush it you can't force it you've got to 
you got to just let it flow, but I, uh, you, you can't be doing other shows, <laughs> you know, writing other shows and then be critical of the thing that you can't finish. Yep. And other people said, okay, well, we're running with it. Oh, y'all ruined it. Nah, shut up. Get out of here. He's like, well, they shut me out. I'm like, really? They, they would shut. If you went and knocked on HBO's door, they wouldn't let you come in. The creator of the most, the biggest show in their entire catalog. I, I think they'd take your call. <laughs> I think they would. Well, this is House of the Dragon. This is a prequel it happens 172 years before Daenerys Targaryen is born, I believe. So it's yeah, 200, it's something like 200 years, basically a 200 year prequel. Viserys, of the title card. Yeah. Um, King Viserys hosts a tournament to celebrate the birth of his second child. And Rhaenyra welcomes her uncle Damon back to the Red Keep. That's the essential gist of the initial episode. But now we have a look. So we've been we've been wanting to see what this was going to look like, right? Is this going to feel like Game of Thrones? Some people are saying they'll never watch it again. That's a lie, <laughs> based on the ratings. Yeah. So Brian, you're you're literally uh, Troy. You're a huge fan too. But honestly, <clears throat> I've I've heard uh, Brian is, is obsessed with this show to some degree. So I'm going to ask you first: Was this worth the return to Game of Thrones for you? Generally speaking, when a series wraps up. And it's wrapped up tightly. For instance, Breaking Bad. I didn't need I didn't need Better Call Saul. I've never heard a bad thing about Better Call Saul. I just I've I haven't watched any of the episodes. I don't need any more. I don't need any more from the Breaking Bad universe. So um I Definitely really El, El Camino, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. That that I, yeah, I watched that. That was yeah, that did <laughs> that really didn't spark much, you know, di- didn't do much to change my mind for sure. So, yeah, when I heard the news about more Game of Thrones, I thought, oh, here we go. We're going to it's going to be watered down now. And that that scares me because as I am a fan. But even objectively speaking, compared to other stuff, it may be the greatest series of all time. Just from the complexity and the depth in everything that's been involved from day one all the way through to the end. So, yeah, it's the first episode. You know, I, kept, I really didn't watch too many of the, I didn't watch any of the trailers until recently. So I really didn't know what visually to expect. I was pleasantly surprised there. And with this first episode, I've got, hope, I've got fairly positive hopes for it. it. It does feel like Game of Thrones. It, the, the vibe there is there. So they, you know, they made sure to hit some points they usually like to do. You know, they wanted to make sure to, hey, look, this is a violent world that, that we live in and we see evidence of that uh also the power struggles so in a way it looks like well it's more of the same but ah, i'm i'm ready for it I, I i'm ready for not knowing what the next episode is again <laughs> because i've rewatched i just finished a rewatch of game of thrones recently and it's like oh okay yeah here we go all right but, how do you so, feel rewatching it by the way how did you feel rewatching it did you feel like it- did you see the disdain that other people have? Or are you like, nah, it wasn't nearly as bad as people made it out to be? I completely, the the, the last two seasons work. The last two seasons work. Um, my, what I, what I think a lot of people's issues probably stem from is the time. You know, it's, it's, first of all, you're, it's a week in those six weeks or seven weeks in one season and another six weeks in the next one. And you're having to wait like a year in between or whatever it was, six months or a year in between those two seasons, Mm -hmm. you get all of that and you get a season's really kind of a, a a network season's worth 13 episodes in like two years. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it does, it did feel like we were cheated one or two episodes when they originally came out and it did feel rushed rewatching it where you're just flipping to the next one. I didn't see any problems with it. None. Now, even, I, I, even when Danny I mean, snaps, been, that's, been, that's everybody's no, number one complaint is Danny snapped they, out of nowhere. I'm like, man, they painted that. They've been, the they've, been they've been foreshadowing that for freaking seasons, multiple seasons. So that's not a surprise. If you're paying attention to the show, that's not a surprise. That is, that's, where this whole show has been heading, which is what's, you know, I've, it's one of those things I've been laughing at. People are naming their, you know, their dogs after her. They're, they're, you know, I'm team Danny and all this other stuff. And I'm like, y'all aren't watching the show. 
<laughs> you weren't watching the show. So, yeah. So you, had no, you, had, you had no problem with how fast a crow flies in the last two seasons? No, no, yeah. I, I Even the dragons, even the dragons are going, you know, 1,500 miles in about, you know, Gen, Gendry just ran over mountains, <laughs> snowy did. mountains in, in like 37 <laughs> minutes or something. He, he ran the length of Canada, you know, the top part where it's nothing but white mountains. I'm sure he slid so, a little. Yeah, he probably did. Yeah, cascaded. You know, right. Yeah, I'm sure sliding down the other side of that mountain, you you, you make up a little bit more time. <laughs> right. So that's how you get. That's how you make that extra day up. Shambling. Right. Yeah. 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 There was there was some time, you know, time space continuum issues, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> story wise, it holds up. Story wise, absolutely. I was fine with it. I was fine. Uh, how about you, Trey? What do you what do you think? House of the Dragon does it remind you of Game of Thrones? Do you feel like I'm back in Westeros, or do you feel like I don't need this now. No, I feel like, I feel the same way I felt as we settled into the Star Wars prequels. Not that the the content wise, you know, this content was much better than the Star Wars, but it felt like Star Wars. You had, you know, this the the Jedi and the Sith and the in the in the high in the Jedi Council, and it felt like you were getting like lore that was missing from the first three movies of, you know, why the Jedi and the Sith don't exactly like each other and things of that nature. That's what this kind of felt like. It felt like, you know, we're, we're getting introduced to the the Targaryens and why they have this power over the dragons and why they're currently sitting on the iron throne and have had such a dynasty in that position for so long. And the one thing that I really thought was kind of one of the better things of game of thrones was when they finally went to old valeria even though he got a little grayscale by going over there mm-hmm. um but just to see what old valeria was like in those couple episodes like i'm hoping that we get more of that history from the old valeria perspective because to to have the 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 old the old tongues and the speak and you know the minute the minute they were um you know standing there with the dragon and the two pyres it's like oh if she doesn't say dracarys right now it's like this is this is totally not the, the show that I thought it was going to be. And then when she's like, D- yeah, D-, I was like, just say it, <laughs> say it. Speaking of like nitpicky stuff, I'm sitting here looking at like the five or six soldiers that's right on the other side of that, those matchsticks, you know, and yeah. I'm going <laughs> that candling for that funeral. I'm going, dude, you better move. This, yeah, you better take about six or seven steps back. Y'all are about to get roasted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, there's a giant dragon pointing right at you why aren't you why are you that close to this this funeral deal i mean so. getting ready to light it up i mean you right, heard right, you right. heard the word back up back up you've had to have heard this before there's dragons all over the place you had to have heard this before and i'm sure there's a valerian out there that's like i you know pissed at me because i pronounced it wrong or something right it's probably more like Dracarys <laughs> or something but i i did notice her pronunciation is different she rolled her tongue she did she rolled the r mm-hmm. yeah she rolled the r um more than i was like oh i like that better yeah, it was like it was a little dragon growl, you know. Yeah. So yeah. wow, it, you so. guys are freaking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Just nerds. Yeah, no, but I thought it was a I thought it was a really great history lesson. Um, I think it's I think it's almost a little comical that for all of these years we passed down this warning that the you know the death of humanity is coming. It's like like bitch, please, like for how long? Like five hundred years? You're like predicting this is going to happen. Like that's a way to really sooner, keep a hold sooner, on society. Sooner or later, you're bound to be right. Just, you yeah, know? right. Yeah. Just, I've been don't predicting break off stuff from too. The, don't break off from the Soviet Union. It's okay if we're all still together because you know there's going to be something coming from Antarctica pretty soon. The Tremors is the world. <laughs> <laughs> but and, I, you know, again, I don't, I don't really, I don't, I'm not big on prequels. I think the the once you get a movie or a series, and then all of a sudden you start doing the prequels, to me, it's it's almost a sign that the the property is is on his deathbed oh yeah yeah for sure um i just I, I think the prequel thing is is overdone how i feel this works or can work because we've only seen the one episode is throughout the series of game of thrones they've they've referenced this time period so often mm-hmm. so it's not like this is just we're just hey we're here's some new people we talked about like some of these characters were actually mentioned throughout the series. I'm not talking about the books. I'm not, I, I haven't read the books. I'm talking strictly the HBO series. Sure. So this stuff, a lot of these characters and a lot of these, you know, uh, places like Hall. if you, you know, they were, they were in Hall, 
quite a bit in the series, well, it was burned. It was melted. So um, now we see it not melted. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, this the series comes up a lot, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's um, I, I again, there's 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 been so much talk about it throughout the series. We don't really have the the context. Now we're getting the context. So yeah, you're actually, the series actually goes all the way through, like to see like the Mad King's rise. And then even maybe even the death of the right. Mad King, right? Can right. get us up to like the current time. Sure, it could be. Show. You would have to skip through. You're going to have to lose a lot of characters then. Cause they're going to age out. I mean, essentially, right. to do that. I, I'm sure yeah. they're probably. That's probably what they're doing. They're probably building to that. But to do that, wouldn't they have to have Jamie Lannister? Yeah, yeah. At cause some he, point, because he yeah. killed the Mad King. He killed yeah. the Mad King. So I mean, you'd have to have him, and they'd have to clean him up or CGI him. Because well, yeah. Now they're well, pace. Be young, he'd looking be younger at, at that time, wouldn't he? Unless it, unless this is going to be like a one or two season deal that like that's the original plan is, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going <laughs> to pull a season eight and we're going to do a lot of time jumping. Um, <laughs> There's precedent. Right, right, right. So you don't, you don't know that but, they already didn't film that potentially either. I, well, absolutely. Right, right. I mean, they could. And again, this I don't know how they're how they're how much they're going to milk this series out. Um, and, and that's the trick with this, right? Because. I loved everything about it. I actually really love this premiere, although it took a little bit to get into it. But right. we all we all have the same concern, I guess, about the series as a whole is like, where would it end? Because we know how the story ends technically already. Yeah. Right. The Targaryens lose the throne. That's really, I mean, that's what they, they're really setting up in this first episode is they're setting up. This is how the Targaryens lost the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah. It's, I right. mean, that's what the prologue is alluding to. The whole yeah, prologue. the whole uh, the only thing that they can, well, the only reason that they would ever lose it is by their basically by their own self. The only thing that would bring the house down would be a Targaryen. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, which then sets up the entire Game of Thrones, which is the how does the Targaryen get back on the throne? Uh, burn the whole King's Landing down. <laughs> that's what we found out. <laughs> that's that's what happens. That's kind of how they do. That's just kind of how they do things. Which yeah, just shows was- you that Danny was really going to be twisted the entire time anyway. Yeah, what did yep. you th- what did you think about the whole prophecy thing? When that came up, and I know a lot of people are talking about it, like, oh, well, you bitches knew about this the whole time and you're not sharing that with anybody. And uh, and I, I'm assuming it stopped with the Mad King. He didn't get a chance to pass it down because he was mad or whatever, so nobody else knew about it. But still, that seems like quite the secret in this place that can't keep a secret to save their damn lives. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Especially as Stark is sitting there bending the knee to Viserys and his heir. It's like, it's like, Hey buddy, you know, there's, there's some people living North of you. Could you take care of them for me? <laughs> Boy, they're going to be so mad when they've been passing this prophecy down for years and then find out all you got to do is take out the lead vampire and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody passed that secret along. Get the top guy. But, it, but it was a really cool tie in because when you see that the Targaryens are the ones that are passing this knowledge down, that it's actually the dragon glass that you needed in order to kill the giant vampire to take them all down. So really it's all about the Targaryens. The whole thing is about the Targaryens at the end of the day. And everybody else in the seven kingdoms is just kind of like their pawns in the entire. Well, this show is definitely all about the Targaryens. Right. I mean, I mean the first series was more about the Starks really. Um, and, and this one, uh, you know, now we're going to the Targaryens. I would argue it was more about the Starks. So what do you, um, what do you think about the new characters? Anybody really stand out to you? I will say I am of the rare mindset that I don't love Matt Smith. I know people love him as Dr. Who. I just find him to be okay, but I really liked him here. So uh, as Damon, Prince Damon, what did you guys think about the character set? Did anybody stand out to you? Do you like anybody any more than anyone else? And and also, I do want to say, I think Damon did it intentionally to to get himself kicked off as the heir. Yeah, I'm. I I don't like Matt Smith generally as an actor. As honestly, it's probably more from seeing his interviews. I don't. He he weirds me out. I don't know what it is. And I was never. I've never been a big Doctor Who fan, so I never gave you much of a chance there. But the other stuff I have seen him in, I've just. Yeah, I don't really have a fair reasonable reason for not liking him i just but this is the role he was made for so far out of one episode i really like him as this 
really unlikable person. I guess that allows me to, you know, fairly channel my disdain for him. Um, but this this role fits him more than anything that I've ever seen him in. And I, I think that was brilliant casting. I was excited to see Graham McTavish. He's kind of the the bald bearded guy, the big bald bearded guy. Uh, I don't know. I just, he's been in a lot of stuff, just kind of background character type stuff, but uh, I like him. And the girl that plays Rhaenyra is just striking. She's just like, she's on the screen. It's hard to take your eyes off of her. She really kind of, she's got some gravitas for, for being so young. how old she is. Yeah. yeah. She can't be that young. Millie Alcock is her name. Yeah. So they've got some, and Reese Iphons, I've sat there for 20 minutes or 30 minutes before I could figure out who that was. And it finally, something about like his eyes or something. He, he looked at somebody from the side or something that was like, Oh, it's the lizard. It's, it's the, the kicker from the, uh, what was it? The replacements, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, the crazy yeah. Kicker. I didn't realize it was him either. His high tower is auto high tower. I had no idea that was him. I had no idea. Yeah. So, uh, that was, that was good. I was, I like that guy. He's kind of a underused actor. So it was good to see him in that role. But yeah, those are a few of my, my favorites. Uh, Graham played Sir Harold Westerling. That was the character yeah. he played. He was, he was kind of like her, uh, Rhaenyra's kind of bodyguard. Yep. King, almost a, I don't know if it's what the is hound. actual. It's the hound. Kind of, yeah, kind of the hound, yeah. So, uh, how, about, how about you, Troy? Rhaenyra's, Rhaenyra's best friend that kind of tagged along with her. I thought she was yeah. really interesting. And then yep. when she comes, she comes to see Otto at one time, does she not? And then that's when they send her to the king's chambers and you're just like, oh, where is this going to go? Because right. you know what? Oh, I knew where Otto that was, was going to go. You didn't know where that was going to go? I knew that well, was going to go. Well, we knew what Otto was suggesting, but then when it Hey, know, it he, need, he needs a little way. comfort. And you know what I'm saying? Go comfort him. <laughs> yeah. Get a baby. Get a baby put on in your the mama's, oven. Put on your mama's dress. Make it look pretty. That's the Game of Thrones I know right there where it's like, right. go get pregnant because then I got an heir on my side. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought she was really well done. Um, Corliss was an interesting character. I wish to see more of him because it seemed like he was kind of like, well, you know, I kind of like this and like, well, you know, it's like, there was that whole argument about you were just like putting up this person for the thing. And like, now you're putting up this person for the thing. So Corliss reminds me of, um, Oh my gosh, the bald, v- uh, Varys, Varys. Yeah. From, uh, from the from original series. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Rainus, uh, I think you're, you're thinking of the wrong name. Alicent a- a- Hightower was is Hightower's daughter. Rhaenys yeah. is actually the one that's married to Lord Corlys. She, she's the she's the queen that almost was or that never was or whatever it was. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Rhaenys, older, yeah, the, Rhaenys the older, was yeah. the yeah. was the one that was up against Viceress. It was right. passed and over for passed over. Right. Yeah. right. Which is hard because it sounds like Rhaenyra, who is the daughter of Viceress. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, and Allison is the <laughs> is the best friend. See, these, I'll tell you what. This is the one thing I learned about the first the first series, Game of Thrones. It took me about four seasons to understand what everybody's names name was, and lots of and lots and how of they, subtitles. how they related yeah. to each other on the on the map. Exactly, literally the only show I can stand to have the subtitles on at all times. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to have to rethink this so hard. So here you go, <laughs> boom. Because I try to do it as like. You know, it's kind of, kind of when you, ah, oh, I'm so manly, I ain't going to go and go to subtitles. I can hear it. I can listen. Nope. I'm stupid. Nope. Put the subtitles on. I need, I need help. No, you're, you're, you're listening to made up words in a foreign accent, <laughs> talking about foreign places and, and car- creatures that don't exist. So yeah, it's almost mandatory. You, that you in the dark. The, in the while dark. The, while the score is playing behind it and, yeah. uh, and, and Damien stealing a dragon. Right. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have. It's almost mandatory. Yeah, it was. It was critical too in the scene when they're they're pledging their allegiance, right? Two vice versa in the air at the end because you're like, okay, oh, there's Winterfell, and oh, there's the the Vale. Here's Old Town, and mm-hmm. you're just yep. kind of seeing like who are the players on the map because I'm sure they'll come into play at some point in the series. Hey, speaking speaking of reflecting back on the original series. You know, th- this show gets right to the point. Like, it just gets going, right? You've got the opening and then uh, the prologue, and then you have the House of the Dragon logo, and then boom, we're back in it. No Game of Thrones intro music. Does that right. bother you? Do you? If they do not do that in future episodes, will that bother you? Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's the first season. It's the, you know, they usually have kind of a cold open whenever you have a series premiere type of stuff. A lot of times you don't have the 
title, whatever. The full credits. The full, the full intro, credits, yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, it'll be interesting. You know, I thought about it. It'll be interest, interesting if they keep the same type of intro or if they do something different that's similar. I'm, they've got some of the greatest creative <laughs> people in the business working there. So I'm sure they'll come up with something. But I don't need it. I mean, it saves two minutes of that you can put more product up on the screen. So if I'm if they don't do it, I'm fine. If they do, I'm very curious to see what they do with it. Yeah, we had that discussion over in the Hollywood Outsider Facebook group about credit sequences and if they were needed or not needed. And quite frankly, it's like unless the credit sequ- like my comment was that if unless credit sequence changes where I'm looking for something different in the credits every week, it's like you don't need that credit sequence. Flash the mm-hmm. logo, get on with it. Let's go. Like I said, two minutes saved. Although this would be a big departure for HBO because HBO usually has large credit sequences in most of their shows. So to, to deviate from that would be a, an interesting step. With Game of Thrones, for a while, the, the opening credits was a good perspective of where it, it really put into perspective where everything was located. And just, you know, oh, okay, well, we're going from from Winterfell to King's Landing doesn't sound that bad, but it's like a, something like a thousand miles or, or 1100 miles or something like that. It's you're not, you know, and when you're doing that on foot or horseback, that takes a while. So it, if you're really watching it and I mean, it, I don't know, my brain just don't work that way. You, you kind of, the first, I don't know the first number of times I watched, I'm going, we're flipping here. We're flipping right. We're flipping over to left and right. And all of a sudden we're, this is okay. But but at least you know where the places are going to be taking place at. And if you've got a general layout of where everything is at, the, the Winterfells with the Heron Hall with Winterfell and uh, with the uh, King's Landing and Dorne and whatever, then, you know, you can kind of, uh, you kind of know where, where everybody's at in relation to each other. So it, it, it helps. But I also think if you're watching House of the Dragon, you're probably somewhat, you probably know somewhat where everything is at. You don't really need, the, you probably don't need the map. For this and on the same token i would add if you didn't have that map to show you how far things are would the distance have bothered you so much in the last two seasons uh yeah because <laughs> you're, i'm just trying to help them as much as i can <laughs> yeah because i mean you're you're you know these people are like days and days and days ahead on the north end of the wall they're sitting on this little rock out in the middle of this frozen lake <laughs> and <laughs> Then you got somebody who's, you know, down in the sunshine that's, you know, sitting there talking to a dragon. You're like, you know, okay, this is <laughs> now all of a sudden, five minutes later, they're arriving, saving the day. Eh. Maybe the dragon burned all the ice in that general area. Hello? Science. <laughs> <laughs> Science. Science. So, so what yeah. what did it not do? Did it not do anything right? Did, was there anything in the episode where you're like, okay, I don't care about any of this? Or did, not were real, you f- not, not no. for me, no. Not really. Yeah, I mean, the beginning was a little slow, but... Yeah, that's really about it. Yeah. But once, the ter- once the tournament comes and you know that he's trying to have a son and that's all happening at the same time oh, man. and parallelisms the, between it, I think that was, that was pretty epic. The joust scene and the birthing scene were brutal. Just brutal. And what... Re- yeah, the in the... The, I don't know, whatever, sound direction, sound design, whatever, you, I don't know what it is, but the sound, if you go back and if you've got any kind of more than just your TV speakers, right, a, a sound bar or, mm-hmm. or something bigger, really listen to that joust. I mean, just close your eyes and, and you know what's going on. Yeah. This, the, the fullness in the, like the, the breaking shields and the, the jousting sticks and the clanging of the, of the sword on the metal is just, it's like, Man, this is this is top notch. Oh, Intermixed with the sounds of the C section and the woman screaming, yeah, and the hands oh, going in and trying to right. pull out the baby and the baby crying as the as the well bodysuit is sliding well down the joust rail. So right. well edited, yeah. yeah. And so, joust vision, joust vision was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's you know that's probably the best jousting scene or scenes that I've that's been in for me that's been in any of these any movies or series before yeah because the last duel would have been the only thing most recently comparable and yeah joust, I mean joust, joust camera down the lance like any day of the week generally is kind of boring in a way just kind of by nature but man it really they really ramped it up it looked man it looked and sounded amazing and I like I got it real I got a chuckle out of the the beginning of the up when it says the uh 
the words come on the screen. It talks about, you know, House Targaryen and blah, blah, blah. And it's 174 years. 172 years before Daenerys Targaryen. Yeah. And basically, like, basically, it just says, this is all you really need to know. Like, all the other words (laughs) disappear. And it says, 172 172 years years before before Daenerys. I was like, got it. Bravo. Got it. We're good. Let's move on. And boom, it, it, like I say, it jumps right into it and just, and kicks off, you know. So I've got two pivotal questions and then we'll we'll close up. Okay. All right. Number one. These are, these are basically just uh philosophical, maybe. I don't know. So whose side are you on in terms of the Damon Hightower battle? Because Damon went and basically made sure that every thief in town was afraid to rob anyone. Cuts off hands, limbs, and everything else, puts the fear of hell into everyone. Who whose side of this argument are you on? Are you on Damon's side or Hightower's side? From a fictional standpoint. Mm, interesting. Even though Hightower actually put him in charge of that group. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. In terms of how he chose to uh, enforce the rulings. I, I, you know, not necessarily a fan of going around cutting people's balls off. <laughs> I mean, it so seems you- a bit, it seems a bit much for, you know, stealing. I, I mean, I just, it's just, it's just me. I mean, I'm, you know, um, feels pretty stringent. That's what you're saying. A little, little strong. It's, it's, it's pretty strict. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's using a sledgehammer to kill a fly, you know? I mean, it, it, it gets the message across, but you know, but I mean, even, even a more evolved state in France in the 1800s, you know, Jean Valjean is like pretty much butchered for stealing a loaf of bread. So this would have to be more yeah, barbaric he deserved, than that. He back deserved in the day. it. He was asking for it. <laughs> yeah. Don't take my bread. Taken, he should have taken the sourdough. That's right. What's great about this series is that rye. Some, nobody likes rye. Some I love rye. Shut up. Um, so so much of this show is actually in the the books are taken from actual history. So many of these things actually happened at some point yeah. in in our in our own history, and that's right. what's fascinating to me. Yeah, I don't think that the the way he executed the the concept of the execution that he did, I think, is spot on for the time period that it's portraying. I think it's the joy in which he took in doing it is the issue that's fair yeah the glee the sheer glee the smugness afterwards that he oh. <laughs> that he displayed yeah <laughs> and then but basically basically buying all of his servants now their whores and yeah. drink you know and then basically saying like screw you brother i, st- air, I still air think for a day air for a day i still think he did that on purpose to be removed as heir i don't think he wanted the throne because he heard that whole discussion between his brother and Hightower. I, I really believe he did that on purpose. He didn't want to be there. He just wanted to. He just wanted his brother to know how much he just didn't want to be here. I just want to be. No, done he with just this. he just wanted to basically figure out that the, his brother's weak, and now that he's got a, even a weaker female taking charge, like this is his plan to take over. Yeah, I don't think she's weak. I think she's a lot tougher than she seems. Or actually, I think I think she seems pretty tough. Actually, I think she's played off that way because you're you're. You're seeing that from Daenerys's perspective. Yeah, we've already seen one young Targaryen female rise up. You know, but he's been in her ear like this whole time, though. So I kind of agree there with, with Troy. It's almost like he's, yeah, I'll help kind of push her towards that way, but I'll actually be the one mm. in charge. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do what I can to, to undermine and, and you know, make sure this this other, uh, you know, this, what was it, air for a day, the, the baby. Mm-hmm. I you mean, know. there's there's very much like a Lannister Cersei kind of feeling when she's he's like putting the necklace on her and stuff, and you're just kind of like, right. yeah, but it's gonna go against type. There's no way they're gonna repeat that. So it, I think it's gonna go against type. It's gonna. I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be, be a unexpected. sexual relationship, but I think it'll be like a, 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 a like a hand. It could be they inbreed. They do inbreed. I that mean, is that's their whole thing. They want to keep the right. pure, the bloodline pure. So they could, uh, they could ho- totally go to Pound Town. Sure. And you know, all the people that have read the books are like, you guys are wrong. You're so stupid. Blah, no, blah, blah. That's a hundred percent in the books. So well, yeah, her, the inbreeding is I'm saying like, yeah. well, and her mom kind of foreshadowed though, like, Hey, look, you know, something along the lines of, you know, it won't be long and you'll be in this same position type of deal. So, uh, when she visited her mom somewhere around the first third of the show or something like that, right. her mom's laying yep. in bed, she goes to visit her and stuff. And she basically tells her like, yeah, you know, this is our, this is our battle. This it's is our what lot we do. Life. Yep. Right. This is uh won't be long and you'll be here yourself. So that brings me to my other question. While you're ruling at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Brings me to my other question. Did King Viserys make the right call with 
in terms of his wife? I mean, obviously, you know, the outcome, but was the decision made, you know, with the right information that he make the right call? He's going to lose both of them or maybe save one. I mean, for the time period, that's exactly what you would do. Like your job is to have a male heir in order to save the lineage. So, I mean, if you're, if this is your last chance to have a male heir, then yeah, technically I think you did make the right call. Mm, it's hard for me to agree with that, but kind of do. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he didn't, he didn't know that someone was going to die. I mean, that's right. The other, no. I mean, right. And, the, and the thing is, is we don't even know what he actually died of. Right. A, a broken heart. Cause his mom was dead. I like a hand over the face. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You don't know, I and mean, that's a thing. You Brian, you watched a little the too way, much of the show in the last couple of weeks. The way the the way the priest father guy was holding the baby, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah, Brian could be onto something. That baby could have been suffocated. Yeah. Oh, we'll get a flashback, and we'll see. Like you know, there's you know, I mean, look like, again, Damon. You know, he, who knows what that guy's capable of? He's just went around cutting balls off dudes. So <laughs> and heads, just and heads, severing heads, hands, balls, the whole kit yeah, and it was, bottle. It, it came out just fine. It was crying just fine. And then all of a sudden it, it was dead. No, yeah, it, it was, was sputtering dead. a little bit. Go back and rewatch it. The baby was not crying just yeah, fine. Because it's the- <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it does that when you got an adult hand over its nose and mouth. <laughs> I got to go rewatch it to see if, where the hand is exactly now. Damn it. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> all right. I think that does anything else you guys want to say? Is there anything you're looking forward to from the show? I mean, you just want to see it play out. The I dragon, to, yeah. the dragon to people airtime split was perfect in this. More dragons. Yeah. Uh, I I'm fine with the ratio as it was with this episode. I don't need it just solely about their air support. You know, um, an air force movie basically. <laughs> There's ten of them. I want to see a scene where ten dragons are in the same scene though. I really do. Yeah. Like because they said something to the effect of how many they have. They have ten. Like uh, the, ten, in, ten, ten are around or something like ten, that. I yeah. Gotcha. So. They're all wiped out within 172 years. People are dumb. We do dumb stuff. Yes. We, or, or the dragons fought each other because maybe Targaryens start fighting. Like you said, that's the only way that it can yeah, be destroyed. Sure, you're following and leading and listening to at the time. Yeah. So I could see a, I want to see a dragon war in the sky. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like the battle of Blackwater, but with dragons in the yes, sky. Exactly. I'm down. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. I, I'm just, I don't have any expectations. I, there's nothing I'm... Ooh, I don't want to see this. I want to see that. I'm, I, I really, this is the first time I think I'm a little bit excited in a long time here that I don't know what's coming and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're saying that the, the prequels might be overdone, but it's kind of the same thing with Lord of the Rings starting in a week and a half. Yeah. It's, it's the, we've heard about this stuff for so yeah. long right? to visually see it and experience that I think is just going to be a joy. I agree. Yep. I still think, why these two didn't break apart their release patterns more makes no oh, sense to me. Why is the Rings of Power, the Lord of the Rings series coming out so close to House of the Dragon? How, one of you should have moved just for p- pure principle. Share it. Yeah. I mean, sh- just share it. You know, like, oh, look, work with each other on it. This is something, I mean, y'all could, <laughs> they just. You could own fantasy for the absolutely. entire sci fi, it would be like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. We'll see what happens. I want to know which one's more popular. Huge franchises, and, and Amazon has a lot more stake in theirs than uh, HBO does. Amazon yeah, well, has a lot of people that is... didn't even know that they own this channel that will probably now be turning it on for the first time. Hmm. Well, all I know is there was a lot of positive hype around Wheel of Time before it came out. And... Well, that was a CGI fault. CGI was terrible. Uh, that, that CGI was pretty terrible. <laughs> all I know was... <laughs> you want your time back? I well no I, I started to watch it and then it was just like bad thing after bad thing after bad thing then I get, I started something else and then all the like just nothing positive I, I and it got renewed again for like the the season three or whatever mm-hmm. that's what I saw wow okay <laughs> so the like, good wow. so the good news is if Amazon's going to put money behind a bad thing you know how much money they're going to put behind a good thing like something good there yeah. there you go just make more Jack Reacher that's really all I need from them. <laughs> Just get that done. We're well, right. going to get it because Lord of the Rings will bring it. We are out. Make sure you check out House of the Dragon if you have not. If you're, you've already been spoiled to shit if you got it this far and you haven't seen it yet. That's wild. But uh, it's it's worth the watch. It's definitely nice to be back in Westeros. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Brian, for being here. Yeah, man, my pleasure. But if yeah, if 
they're listening to this before they watch it, this might help them enjoy the show more. It's true. It, the episode more, they'll have a little bit of perspective. They don't, you know, I mean, they don't really know. Oh, geez. Cutting balls off. Oh, there's the ball shot. All right. Good deal. There's dragons. <laughs> there's, there's Damon. Now I know these names are starting to, maybe it helps like the names match the characters easier than it might've done for us. It could. And don't go to IMDB because you will be ruined. I promise you. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, stay stuff away from there. The stuff is in a book. So the, the whole wiki is out there. Just ask a question in the in the thread, the the House of the Dragon thread. That, hey, who is this guy? Where did, have I seen this guy before? Where have I seen this girl before? There you before? go. Play it safe. Do that. Be safe. Do that. And there and there is an official uh, HBO sponsored podcast for this as well. That was actually oh, is there? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that though. Uh, that I'll probably listen to if it's an official one. The ho, sure. the ho got passed over. I know. I was waiting for the call, and I guess once you left, they said no. Uh-uh. Yeah. Troy's trying to get the names right. Troy's been working really hard to get these names right. So HBO, we were here. I only got them right the first time around because I watched it in two weeks <laughs> to get ready for season seven. <laughs> so it was kind of like drilled in after, you know, 60 right. hours. <laughs> I said Daenerys wrong for years. I think I still do, yeah. really. That's was Daenerys. <laughs> Whatever. We're out of here. So everybody, remember the next time you go to a theater or sit at home comfortably on your couch, buy popcorn. <laughs> <laughs>